So here we go. 30 punk singles that survived the test of time. Number 30. Defiant Pose by a band called The Cortinas. It's a great record and uh, an even greater car. What else can I say? Number 30, Defiant Pose by the Cortinas. Number 29, Shadow by the Lurkers. The Lurkers were a great band. I thought they were a bit like the kind of English Ramones or something. Saw them many times and uh, I did lurk. Uh, some years later, I remember being pulled by the cops just off of uh, Tottenham Court Road in London. I was waiting for my girlfriend there, and uh, these cops came up and said, Oi, we got reports you're lurking. And I thought to myself, yeah, well, I have done a bit of lurking in my time. And I said, oh, no, no, I'm not lurking, mate. And uh, they searched me, and what they found was this copy of uh, a little Neolithic statuette that I got of a Venus figurine. And they're like, she's all kind of plump and, you know, um, big-breasted and all the rest of it. And they're like, what's this? And I said, well, it's like a Neolithic uh, figurine, you know, is that is that all right? And they were like, looked at me suspiciously and then uh, got on their way. So, number 29, The Lurkers, Shadow. Great song. Number 28, Automatic Lover by The Vibrators. Now, there's a motorbike. Hold on. I saw The Vibrators quite a few times. They're a bit underrated. Bit of a rock band, kind of punk band, pub rock band. And once uh, going to the Nashville in South London, South Kensington, I think it was, I got me head kicked in by a load of guys outside. And uh, that wasn't very nice at all. But uh, I didn't manage to see them that night. And I still carry the scars to this day. Number 27. Hurry up, Harry by Sham 69. Sham 69 were a weird band, you know, very sort of a working class punk sound and they, they ended up getting done in by everybody fighting at their gigs over politics and stuff, but Hurry Up Harry was a great fun tune and uh, I'll put this in there as a remembrance for my old mate Harry who's not with us now and I was always trying to get him to the pub but I very rarely managed it but there you go Hurry Up Harry by Sham69 Number 26 Complete Control by The Clash Now The Clash weren't quite the, the mega band they later became they were right at the bottom of the charts with this one, but I remember it really well because I was working in a factory at the time, screwing together about a zillion uh, plugs and in this electronics factory, and they actually played this on Radio 1. They used to beam Radio 1 all over the factory floor, and uh, I loved it, but I didn't know what Joe Strummer was talking about, really, but I kind of got the sense of it, so... There you go. That's the clash. Complete control. Number 25. UK 79 by Crisis. Crisis have got a bit of a tangled history. Um, I went to one of their gigs. I think it was one of their final gigs. And they had all this smoke come out on stage. I think it was the Moonlight Hotel in Hampstead. Very famous uh, venue small uh, but it was kind of packed out and they, before the band came on there was all this smoke coming out of the stage you know stage smoke and uh, as I seem to remember a kind of drummer boy or something just playing on his own and we thought yeah okay the, the smoke it weren't very hip but yeah okay they're using smoke and that was great and the smoke kept coming and the drummer kept playing and it got so bad at the end we all had to run outside because couldn't see your hand in front of your bloody face. That was terrible so we all ran outside choking and coughing and wondering what the hell was going on. So that's uh, 
UK 79 by Crisis. Number 24. Outside View by Eater. Eater were a great band, very young, when they started off with a punk thing. And kind of famous guy I remember was his name, uh, Degenerate. Brilliant punk name there, Degenerate, who was reported to be about like 10 years old although maybe 14 or 15 or something. They made a hell of a racket, great punk band, and uh, well worth a listen to. So that's Outside View by Eater. Number 23. I think it's 23. Yep, number 23. Problem Child, The Damned. Now, what can you say about The Damned? Such a, such a brilliant band. I once pogoed so much to them at the Hope and Anchor in Islington, I hit me head on the ceiling. It was quite a low ceiling I had, it weren't like 20 foot up, I didn't pogo that much. Uh, yeah, so I saw them two nights running there, that was great. Problem Child is not one of their most well-known singles, it's a great record, but I remember it specifically because my copy of it had a big uh, kind of fault in the record and it would go tsh, tsh, tsh. It was kind of in time with the music, which really added something to my experience of that record. Anyway, that's The Damned Problem Child. Number 22. 1970s have been made in Hong Kong by The Epileptics. Now, The Epileptics are not a very well-known band, but... Uh, I remember them, I, I think I did my first gig supporting the Epileptics up in uh, Bishop Stortford in Hertfordshire at this place called the Triad. The Triad was a fantastic venue. A lot of small bands played there, the Epileptics started there. But when they released this record, I think people were complaining beforehand, you're not allowed to call yourself the Epileptics. They had some troubles from the Epileptic Society. I, I can understand why, uh, but they changed their name to the Licks, and they changed it also again to EpiX, and they ended up as a, a narco-punk band called Flux of Pink Indians, and that's a whole nother story. But the 1970s were made in Hong Kong, just as uh, everything's made in China today. Back in those days, everything plastic was uh, stamped made in Hong Kong. It was a great tune, and I used to, I, I couldn't help myself, I used to jump on stage with them and sing it. Sing me art out to that, so that's well remembered, and it's a great, it's a great tune. Number 21, Nice and Sleazy. By the Stranglers. What I love about this uh, tune, this single, it, it is different. It's kind of, it is sleazy. It's kind of, is nice and sleazy, exactly. But what I remember mostly was seeing this video of them. They did this gig in Battersea Park in uh, South London and they've been accused of being sexist. And so what they did was bring a load of strippers on stage while they were playing this song. And uh, I thought that was a really good way of countering the uh, political correctness of the time. So Nice and Sleazy always reminds me of that video of the strippers on stage at Battersea, <laughs> which would, I wish I'd been there, but I, I, unfortunately I wasn't. But um, great single, great band. Number 20. That's Too Bad and Oh Didn't I Say by Tubeway Army. Now I saw Tubeway Army and Gary Newman leading Tubeway Army when they're a small band and I think they were supporting the Lurkers. Managed to see them a couple of times. In those days, uh, Gary Newman, who became a great big famous electro pop star phenomena thing. In those days he had blonde spiky hair and looked like Billy Idol. So at some point he did do a complete image change there. It's a great record. Um, it's a bit different but it's uh, got that punky edge to it and uh, I, I think maybe for me it was better than his later electro stuff. Although his electro stuff weren't bad was it really. He had a couple of great motorbike 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 alert um 
yeah, that's gone. So, you know, a couple of singles, they weren't bad. He certainly did very well, did Gary Newman, so that's it. Number 19, CID by the UK Subs. What can you say about the UK Subs? They gave me so much entertainment back in the day. And Charlie Harper, who's still around, although we thought he was positively ancient back in the late 70s, and uh, he still is positively ancient, but he's still trucking on, and uh, God bless him for that, and it's a brilliant single, and, you know, what can you say? CID by the UK subs. Number 18, In a Rut by the Ruts. Malcolm Owen, the singer's long gone now, but uh, this was a fantastic record. I first saw the Ruts, I don't know, they were supporting somebody in some obscure pub somewhere in West London, I think it was. I don't remember very well, but I do remember, motorbike alert, I do remember that there weren't many people there when they played, 30, 50 people. And uh, the Ruts were absolutely brilliant, and they became quite a big band. They had quite a few hits, uh, but this was by far their best record as far as I'm concerned, and uh, that's it, the Ruts in a rut. Number 17, What a Waste, by Ian Jury and the Blockheads. Now, was Ian Jury a punk? I think he was. He certainly was a lot of different things. A great genius writer and performer, Ian Jury. And one of my favourite songs was What a Waste, where he lists all the kind of things that he could have been in the world uh, or what a person he was talking about could have been in the world. You know, the Blockheads had this punk energy, but they also had a bit of jazz and they had a bit of blues in there they had some wonderful big hits as well so that's it it's what a waste by ian jury number 16 motorbike we love you by cock sparrow now cock sparrow pop up a lot when i'm talking about music and this was a great record I think their first single coming out in 77, like most of the records here, 77 to 79, a few maybe later. And it's a cover of the Rolling Stones, We Love You, but it's a much better version as far as I'm concerned. And it is an absolutely tremendous single. So there you go, Cox Barra, We Love You. It's got a good B-side as well. Number 15. Another Girl, Another Planet by The Only Ones. Again, were The Only Ones really a punk band? What well, does it matter? They were around at the time, and this is an absolutely tremendous single. I think they were a bit famous for their sort of heroin kind of fetishism, but and this song is maybe dealing with drugs and stuff, but it's an absolutely great record and well worth a listen to. The Only Ones, Another Girl, Another Planet. Number 14, Shot by Both Sides, Magazine. Howard DeVoto, who fronted Magazine, had once been a member of the original Buzzcocks, and I was fortunate, fortunate enough to see the Buzzcocks and their magazine on alternate weeks. Magazine were maybe the first post-punk band Maybe we could call them a prog punk band. And they were absolutely great. So, shot by both sides, magazine. Number 13. The television personalities, King and Country. King and Country is actually, I think, the B-side of Smashing Time, which is a, a good song in itself. But King and Country is a wonderful song. It's kind of, what would you call it, pathos. It, you know, that word comes to mind. It's kind of sad sounding song. The television personality is very underrated band. Big motorbike alert there. A very underrated band, but uh, really had a cult status and maybe still do today. 
they're very sardonic in in their messaging and that's a great thing so uh there you go T television personalities king and country well worth a listen number 12 your generation by generation x Generation X exploded onto our screens on the Mark Boland show. Um, motorbike. They, they don't believe in mufflers or silences around here. Anyway, Generation X exploded onto our screens with uh, the Mark Boland show. Obviously, I'd heard of them before that. I, I never got to see them when they were starting out but I did buy this record it's got a hell of a punch to it and launched Billy Idol's career he with the Elvis sneer which uh, Sid Vicious also had uh, it's not so popular these days the Elvis sneer so someone should bring it back I think Billy Idol probably still does it he's the last professional Elvis sneerer left in the world number 11 O oh, bondage up yours, X-ray specs. What can you say about X-ray specs? Two saxophones go in and a heavy punk riff. Polystyrene later became very, very much a pop star, but it all got too much for her, and she's sadly not with us today. I remember going into the local record shop in '77 when this one came out, and the sort of almost a hippie not quite a hippie guy working there said what you really want to buy this record and I said yeah and he said have you heard it and I said well not really and he said I'll play it for you and he got the 12 inch uh, vinyl out and he played it and he just sort of grimaced and I, I was like joyful and I thought this is wonderful what a wonderful record so there you go it's x-ray specs and oh bondage up yours Number 10, Orgasm Addict by the Buzzcocks. It's got a great cover and what a song. I mean, later they were well known for kind of punk, pop, power, pop love songs. But when this one came out, it really blew your socks off. Uh, could you get away with that today? Uh, certainly not as a chart band although they weren't a chart band <laughs> it was obviously banned that song but it's got great lyrics and it's really explosive song so uh, that's it it's Orgasm Addict by the Buzzcocks number nine Bloody Revolutions by Crass I can't remember what year this came out but it, it what an extraordinary record this is. Crass's finest uh, attempt at music, I think, if you can call it music. Yeah, I'd call it music. Bloody Revolutions really deals with people who, you know, want to overturn everything and the destructive angle that punk had and other movements have where you think you can wipe everything out and then every, everyone will be happy. But what happens is a bloodbath. And uh, that's my, what number is that? Oh, I can't remember. That's number nine, Crass, Bloody Revolutions. Got a good B-side by the Poison Girls as well. Number eight, Life's a Gamble by Penetration. I always remember that scene on So It Goes, this old TV show by, uh, hosted by Tony Wilson, he of Factory Records back in the day and they had film of a penetration play in and it's got Pauline Murray was I can no I can't remember her name now. Pauline something uh was the singer and there's a guy in the crowd, it's a small gig and he's throwing beer all over a, the band and I think he's got a bottle and it, it, of beer and it, all the beers flying around everywhere and then he gets real duffed up when the crowd turn on him and he's like beaten up and dragged out anyway as time went on uh penetration went from a pretty basic punk band into a bit of a sort of almost not quite glam a kind of rock band really more like a rock band and life's a gamble it's got a great cover there 
and uh, you get into a bit of philosophy, you know, it's a, a philosophical record, what a great record it is, so Life's a Gamble by Penetration. Number seven, That's Entertainment by The Jam. What can I say about The Jam? You know, Paul Weller's gone on to make a great career and when he was young he wrote some fantastic power punk, power pop songs. That's Entertainment's quite a slow one, but it really describes life in Britain in those days. Maybe life in Britain in these days, because what the hell has really changed? Apart from having more screens around, everything seems pretty much the same, doesn't it? Uh, there was this pub in Hackney where people used to hang out. You know, you get these hangouts and they disappear and it had a jukebox in it. And I was working at the time and this had been in the 90s. And every time I walked in that bar, I would put That's Entertainment on the jukebox. So I've got very fond memories of that one. So that's the jam, That's Entertainment. Number six, Dame to Blame by Slaughter and the Dogs. I mainly like this one because of the wah-wah pedal. It's a great use of wah-wah pedal going on with Slaughter and the Dogs in this one. And uh, my memory of them is really waiting for them at the marquee to turn up and getting reports that they're broken down on the road and they were still coming, they were still coming and they never turned up and we ended up getting our money back and going home very disappointed. They had some great singles like Crank Tarp and Where Have All The Boot Boys Gone, which I nearly chose, but Dame To Blame was the one I used to listen to, mainly because of the great use of punk wah-wah going on there. So that's Slaughter and the Dogs, Dame To Blame. Number five, Chelsea, High Rise Living. Now this is an odd one to choose, many people might think, and this one also had a scratch on it, it used to go chick, chick, chick. But I uh, loved it, and uh, I've lived up in the air before, not floating, but uh, in concrete structures, and it really kind of hit a spot with me, this one, and Gene October was a bit underrated. He was a fantastic front man and he often had a great band around him. And they played for years and years, never really had any chart success. So I want to include them here. And also because I did get a chance to support Chelsea once with my band and that was at the marquee and it was my dream to play the marquee. See, I'm a small dreamer really and I, I did do that because of Chelsea allowed us to support them and uh, they didn't even touch our knees. So that, that was good, we got away with that one and I got a photo of me at the marquee which I treasure forever and ever. But uh, High Rise Living by Chelsea, great song. Number four, Mannequin by Wire. I could have chose Ex Lion Tamer, another single of those, but I've chosen Mannequin it's got some great ooey oohs in it. And what can you say about Wire? I said Magazine might have been the first post-punk band, but I guess Wire were. Certainly they were very experimental. And funny thing is, they were so lasting in their influence that back in the days of Britpop in the, in the 90s, there were people like Elastica ripping off their riffs pretty much down to a T. A great band, Wire. I, I never saw them much. I think I only saw them once in the later days, so I'm sad about that, but great band, and that single mannequin is fantastic. Everything that punk should have been really experimental. I love the hard driving punk, but I also like the experimental stuff, because I'm a bit of an artsy bastard. Artsy, not Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of an artsy get myself so there you go wire number three homicide by 999 999 were a great band who people you know other punk rockers didn't think they were pure enough and all that but they were fantastic i used to as a bassist myself, I used to watch the bass player, I can't, can't remember his name when I saw him live, which I did many times. It was a really, really hot bass player, man. It was simple but complicated, and 
Homicide is produced so well. It's such a classic song. How can you not like Homicide? And I think it stands up very, very well today. So that's Homicide by 999. Number two. Whole Wide World by Reckless Eric. Now, I never saw Reckless Eric play, but I think this is a fantastic single. I once had connection with a guy who had a bit of a mental illness problem, and he, he used to focus on certain people and claim that they loved him and really wanted him, even though they had hardly ever spoken to him. And he went off in search of this particular woman. He, he would hand out leaflets, have you seen so-and-so? He once had a megaphone and would hang out his window, like asking people if they'd seen this woman who was long gone years and years before and he kind of put me in mind of this record whole wide world and it's very worth listening to it it's kind of a frustrated love song i guess but it works really well on a punk level and it works really well just on a song level could have been at any time any place kind of song so that's reckless eric whole wide world well worth listening to and finally we get to number one and what could this be it might be a little bit controversial with some people but it's television's over by the adverts tv smith who fronted the adverts i think still tours around to this day a great songwriter, very philosophical. They were one of the first punk bands to get a bit of success. And then it kind of faded away by the time this record came out. And I love the line, I've just seen the dead walk by, but they don't seem jealous of my life, which kind of summed things up for me in those days. So I still think it works really well. It's kind of very droney kind of, punk song but that's my number one is the adverts televisions over so i hope you've enjoyed this countdown of 30 punk singles that survived the test of time motorbike alert there going by and uh, i shall return with other musical countdowns i think because they're quite fun to do there's no american punk in this so i want to do one about that uh, and some other stuff we'll see so thanks for listening and thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you about <laughs>